Hi everyone, it's Miss Divika here again. Um, today I'm going to talk about practicing. I'm going to make three videos. The first one is going to be talking about technique, just playing notes and rhythms. The second one is going to be talking about dynamics. And the third video is actually going to be a tutorial on an app that I use a lot called Acapella. And I'm going to show you how to record multiple parts at once. So if you're feeling lonely and if you feel like you're not playing with other people, I'm going to show you um, how you might be able to play with yourself. So first let's talk about technique. The piece that you see on the screen is called The Marriage of Figaro Overture. Um, it's originally an opera, but um, the version that I have here is for clarinet duet. I'm just going to take a look at the top line. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to play it at tempo and see how good I can do. So here we go. Ah, hold on. I messed up. Let me do it again. So that's how to not practice. Mess up, go as fast as you can, start at the beginning of the piece and just hope you're going to make it through. It usually doesn't work that way. It's usually a way for you to feel like you've failed. If you try to play as fast as you possibly can on a piece that you've never worked on before, it's probably going to be too hard. This was too hard for me, that's for sure. So the first thing I do, as you can see up at the top of the screen here, is do my A, B, C, D technique. A is slow it down. I was my metronome here was at 160 and it's going to have to be a lot slower than that. Usually I slow it all the way down to half tempo, which for me on this piece is 80. So I'm going to play that for you and show you what 80 sounds like half tempo. So I'm going to try and play it at that tempo just so you all can see how much slower it is. So when I played it slower, it was a whole lot easier for me to get all the notes and rhythms. One thing that I do when I practice though, is when I play slower, I tend to get bored. For me, I could do that and so it felt boring. So what I'm going to want to do is speed it up, but we already saw that I could not play it faster. So when I slow it down, I try to do different things to make it more interesting. So take a look up here at the, uh, at the two measures that I boxed in red. Those are the two measures I'm going to focus on. I'm going to play them for you so you can hear how they sound. That's how those two measures sound. What I like to do is play it in rhythms, which is B up there. Use rhythms. So at the bottom of my page, you can see one, two, three. The reason that I like to use these rhythms, and let me grab my pen here, is because um, the rhythm that you see is a dotted eighth sixteenth. One and one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. So when on these long notes right here, oops, let me pull that down. On these long notes that you see me highlight, as you play that rhythm at a slow tempo, it gives your brain a chance to think. Then I'm going to highlight the short, the short notes in a different color. Those short notes give your fingers a chance to figure out um, how fast you have to make the connection between the two notes. So I'm going to play that the uh, measure that I've boxed for you with the rhythm at number one. Again. The next thing I like to do is play rhythm two, which is the rhythm backwards. Da 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 Or one E, one E, two E, and a three E, and a four E, and a. So I'm just inverting the rhythm so that a different note is shorter. So here's how that sounds. Again. The next thing I like to do when I'm practicing technique is use groupings. 
So if you look at number uh, the C, A, B, C, it says groupings. So these, uh, the two measures that I'm playing are grouped in uh, groups of four, right? One and two and three and four and, or one E and uh, two E and, uh, because it's in cut time. What I like to do, and if you've got a pen or a pencil, you can go in there and you can write lines. So what I'm gonna do, oops, is pull out my pen and group it in triplets, group it in groups of three. And you can do this with a pen or a pencil. I'm using an iPad right now so I can record it for you. But you can use a pen or a pencil just like I did and practice in triplets, practice in a grouping that you don't see on the page. So again, it's in four, I'm gonna group it in groups of three. Sounds like this. Again. So that's the rhythm that you see in number three here at the bottom. So those are the kinds of groupings I like to use. And once I've done all of those things at a certain tempo marking, so which here's at 80, I've done rhythm one, rhythm two, and rhythm three, and I've slowed it all the way down, I like to play it at that tempo, just as written. Now obviously that is not as fast as I want this piece to go. So I have a very specific way that I like to speed it back up. The human ear can actually only hear four metronome clicks. So if I speed it up to 81, here's 80, here's 81. The human ear can't actually tell that it's any faster. So what I like to do, and it takes up to four metronome clicks for us to be able to tell that it's faster. So what I like to do is start by going down two metronome clicks. So from 80 to 78. Play it at that tempo. And then I like to go up four clicks to 82. So I was able to tell between 78 and 82 that I've gotten faster, but my fingers only really had to learn going from 80 to 82. So I'm allowing my fingers to learn very slowly, but my brain can tell that there's a difference. So I call this the down two, up four metronome technique. So what I do, I go to the tempo, I go to half tempo or whatever tempo I'm practicing at, and then once I feel comfortable, once I've done all my rhythms, once I've done all my different groupings, when I go to speed it back up, I start from wherever I was at 80, I go down two to 78, down two, and then I go back up by four to 82. Once I've got it at 82, I go down to 80, and then I go back up to 84. So after all of those repetitions, I've gone up four metronome clicks. So it does take a while, but it does make you sound much, much better in the end. So tune in for the next video and we'll talk about some dynamics.